I'm Molly, and I'm joined by Ken, and we're both part of the ITSM product marketing team at Atlassian. In this video, we'll be discussing how to take your investment in Jira software to the next level by leveraging the power of Jira service management. Now, if you're not familiar with Jira service management, let's get you up to speed. As you probably know, Jira software is our industry-leading development tool used by over 65,000 customers. Built on the same platform, Jira Service Management is the Atlassian solution for all of your service management needs. It empowers modern agile teams to deliver value fast, provide visibility on one platform, and accelerate the flow of work between development and operations. In addition to all of the benefits of the Jira platform, including the same administration, billing, and security and compliance, Jira Service Management includes all of these features built just for service teams. So what would a Jira software user use Jira Service Management for? Amongst many use cases, here are the ones we see most commonly, particularly when getting started. Adding the portal capability for easier intake of bugs, feature requests, incidents, and other support or development related requests from the customers that a dev team supports. Similar to the previous use case, adding service desk capabilities to a development team to enable enhanced request, incident, change, and asset or configuration capabilities. Sharing a knowledge base with the customers that a dev team supports or the support agents that share those customers. Adding additional end-level dev support to an existing service desk. And finally, record sharing and linking between development and operations teams, including enhanced change enablement and automation of record closure between teams. Now, let's dive in and take a quick look at what some of these use cases look like, along with some best practices on how to use them from Ken. Take it away, Ken. Thanks, Molly. As Molly pointed out, there are a number of features that you can take advantage of with a full license of Jira Service Management, and we will touch on those capabilities. But what we will also focus on here is where Jira software users typically start and how to maximize your licensing between Jira software and Jira Service Management. Our first use case is the portal. The portal gives your customers, both internal and external, access to projects or service desks that allow these customers to submit requests incidents, bugs, or whatever a team wants to offer its customers through an easy to use interface that will then route these records directly to the teams that support them. Here's an example of a basic external service desk that facilitates those types of records. The other thing that your customers can do is search a knowledge base for all types of self-help articles that you want to share with them. Now here's the really good news. It's not gonna cost you anything. With Jira Service Management, customers or requesters don't consume a license, so they're free of charge. This is a significant difference between Atlassian and our competitors. Switching over to the agent perspective, here's where Jira Service Management agents can do things such as pass or link records to other support teams and development teams to add an additional level of support. Or in cases where teams have a need for the full power of Jira Service Management, they can do things such as fulfill service requests, search the knowledge base articles for support related items such as more complex troubleshooting articles, runbooks, and workarounds. Troubleshoot incidents leveraging capabilities such as alerting and on-call scheduling. The incident investigation view, which gives insights into recent code deployments. And our incident command and Slack integrations for rapid incident swarming. 
Those and all the other capabilities that Molly reviewed earlier are available to a Jira Service Management agent. Now, in these cases, these types of users will require a Jira Service Management license. But I'm going to pause here because this is where a lot of our customers can get confused and mistakenly think that they need a Jira Service Management license for every Jira software user. And that's just not the case. So to explain this, I'm now going to show you three roles. Uh, myself as the site admin of Jira Service Management, uh, Sammy, who's a service desk agent and is licensed for Jira Service Management and Jira Software, and Dana, who's a developer and only licensed for Jira Software. Here's Sammy's view of the portal, where he can see all projects or desks, whether they're software or service related. Here's Dana's view of the portal, where she can only see the one desk that's exposed to a general audience. And here's the project admin setting that controls that visibility. As you'll note, it's set to any user of the site, which is why Dana can see it, along with other customers. Now, here's Sammy's agent view, where again, he can view everything and work on everything. And here's Dana's agent view, where she can only see and view software projects. Now, I'm going to show you three key steps to extend the capabilities that Dana, the developer, can use. First, we're going to adjust the permissions on our ITSM project to allow browse project access to any logged in user. Then, we'll do the same to the add comments permission. Now, let's head back to Dana and refresh both views. We'll first note that she can now see the project in the portal. Next, on the agent side, she can also see and view issues. Now, this view is stripped down, so she won't see the same queues, SLAs, or fields as Sammy, because Sammy is fully licensed in Jira Service Management, so he'll be able to see and do more. But what Dana can do now is add an internal comment which allows her to collaborate with Sammy. Now, what about external customer comments, you ask? Well, to do that, Dana would need to go through the portal. But before that, let's first take a look at a sample record via the portal in Sammy's view. As you can see, he can make external comments and transition the workflow, just like he could from the agent view. Now let's see Dana's view. She can't even see the request. Why? because Sammy needs to invite her to the record by making her a participant, which is what we'll do now. And now we go back and refresh Dana's view. And just like that, she can now provide an external comment to the customer. So hopefully you're starting to see the possibilities of how you can have part of your team with full access to Jira service management, part that only needs to interact with agents or customers, and maybe a couple in between. What's also nice is that in situations where you have a Jira software record linked to a Jira service management record, you can use automation to drive workflow between those records regardless of which user is working on them. Taking that a step further, we hope that you're familiar with our change gating feature between Bitbucket, Jira software, and Jira service management where a code deployment can trigger a change record in Jira Service Management to enable a more efficient change practice. Well, in those instances, the Bitbucket or Jira software user also does not need a Jira Service Management license to take advantage of that capability. Now let's review what we went over today, displayed here in this grid that shows what each type of user can do within a Jira software or Jira Service Management project. With this information in mind, we hope that this helps you see some of the possibilities of how you can mix and match your users to take advantage of these capabilities without overspending on licenses. I'll now hand it back to Molly to wrap us up. Thanks, Ken. With that, we hope you see the unique value that adding Jira service management to your Jira software investment can bring. Start a free trial of Jira service management today.